In the previous lecture, we saw how to calculate the average value of continuous time signals. The average value is equal to ratio of total area to the total time. The average value is equal to ratio of total area to the total time. And by using this, we obtain two different formulas. The first one was for the periodic signals and the second one was for the non-periodic signals. I will write down the two formulas quickly. For periodic signals, we first obtain the total area in one period. So we integrate the periodic signal xt with respect to t over one period or you can say the fundamental time period and then we divide the total area by the total time and in this way we have the average value for the periodic signals. In case of non-periodic signals, we perform the integration from minus infinity to infinity and for this we have limit t tends to infinity 1 by t where t is simply the time not period and then we have integration from minus t by 2 to t by 2 integration of non-periodic signal xt with respect to t. This is the formula for non-periodic signals and we have already seen why we are taking the limit as minus t by 2 to t by 2. So I will not explain it once more because we have very less time to solve the problems given here. Now in this lecture we will solve three problems and they are based on the average value calculation and this is the part one of the solved problems based on average value of continuous time signals. The first problem I will skip and I will directly move to the second problem. The first problem is similar to the problem we have solved in the last lecture and as we have already seen two different examples in the previous lecture, I am naming the signals as x3t, x4t and x5t because we have already seen x1t and x2t. x1t was the periodic signal and we calculated the average value of that periodic signal. X2T was non-periodic signal and we calculated the average of that non-periodic signal also. And this particular signal is very much similar to the signal X1T. So this is the homework problem for you. Once you have the average value of this signal, you may post your answer in the comment section. I will directly move to the signal X4T. You can see this signal is from minus infinity to infinity. The extension of signal is from minus infinity to infinity. Now we will see if any particular structure is repeated or not. This structure is repeated. You can see this structure is repeated. So we can say that this signal is periodic signal and as I already told you whenever you start calculating the average value first check whether the signal is periodic or non-periodic because according to that we have to use the two different formulas and as the signal is periodic we will find out the area in one fundamental time period and you can see the fundamental time period t0 is this duration and it is equal to 4 so t0 by 2 will be equal to 2 so let's use the formula for the average it is equal to 1 by t0 t0 is equal to 4 so 1 by 4 integration over the fundamental period t0 then we will integrate the signal with respect to time so this is how you can calculate the average but you can see in one fundamental time period the signal is triangular and rectangular so there is no need to perform the integration because we already know how to calculate the area of triangle and area of rectangle. So we will first calculate the area of this triangle and then we will calculate area of this rectangle. We will add them and in that way we will have the total area in one fundamental time period. So let's do it quickly. 1 by 4 inside the bracket. The area of triangle is half base into altitude base here is equal to 2 so I will multiply 2 and the altitude is equal to 3 it is given so this is the area of the triangle and I will add the area of rectangle here the area of rectangle is length into breadth in this case the length is equal to minus 4 and the breadth or width is equal to 2 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 so this is the area of the rectangle. When you solve it, you will get 1 by 4 inside the bracket 3 minus 8. This is equal to minus 5 by 4. So this is 
the average value of the signal x4 t. Now we will solve the third problem in which you can see the signal and this signal is also extending from minus infinity to infinity. Now let's check if there is any particular structure repeating here. I can see this structure is repeating. This structure is repeating again. I will change the color to show it like this. So we have the repetition of the structure and the signal is extending from minus infinity to infinity. So we can say that signal x5 t is periodic. Signal x4 t was also periodic. Now we will calculate the average value. Again we will use the same formula. The fundamental time period t0 is equal to 2. This is the fundamental time period. And now we will calculate the area of signal over the fundamental time period. So area will be equal to integration from 0 to 2 xt dt and we will divide it by 2 which is the fundamental time period xt is equal to t square from 0 to 2 it is equal to t square so we have integration 0 to 2 t square dt divided by 2 integration of t square is t cube by 3 t cube by 3 the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is 2. In this way you will have 4 by 3. This is the average value of signal x5t and this is our answer. So this is all for this lecture. I hope you now understand how to find out the average value of continuous time signals which are periodic in nature. And the first problem is the homework for you. Once you have your answer, don't forget to post it in comment section.